Hey Bears, Eric here, and this Alan Richson stuff has still got people sort of losing their minds. Now, the reality is, and we've talked about this in a few other videos, is that if Alan was saying things from a more conservative, more right-leaning platform, if he were saying these things and, and believing in those things, these guys would have no problems with anything that he's saying. And we're watching people who advocate for free speech, absolutely, 100% absolute free speech. They're struggling with finding a way to say from their perspective why they believe Alan Richson should not say what he's saying. He should just be quiet and go do the acting while they also advocate for absolute free speech in any other regard. Case in point, we have Eric July here using one of his favorite words, disrespect. He says the cost of disrespecting the fans. And this is a video with Eric talking about the new project that Alan Richen is a part of and why Eric believes that Alan Richen should once again just shut up and act. If nothing else, this, this does show that disconnect between often actor, actress, even, you know, with some of the like directors, the disconnect between them and their audience and, and the type of content is they produce. Now, Okay, so to be very clear here, let's just take that at face value. Eric is saying that there's an issue when actors, actresses, directors have a different perspective than the people they're making content for. That if you are disconnected from those viewers, if you're disconnected from those fans, that that causes a problem in the content you're making if your beliefs are not the same. That's his initial statement, that that disconnect is an issue. All right, let's go on. I will say that there is positive. There are positives that have come come out of this. Okay, Th that is that you know who you're dealing with, and I think yeah, some people would take that to mean that well, you you expect or anticipate that the content that you consume, that individual has to, or that's part of it, whether they worked on it, whether they own it, has to fit your political or social views top to bottom. No, so they don't have to believe in the same stuff. So if you're an actor or director you don't necessarily have to have your values aligned with the people who are consuming your media, the people that are watching your media. All right, so disconnect is bad, but political, social beliefs being the same are also bad. All right, let's see where he's going with this. I'm not saying that, and I'm not sure there are that many people that believe that, look, you need to be sort of a reflection of their, their individual views. But you have to be aware enough to understand what your target audience has been. So are you setting up this thing where it's okay for the target audience to get mad at an actor or director because of their personal beliefs? Because that would sound very opposite of how you've been running your company when it comes to the Ripaverse and some of the criticism you've had. But let's go on. And um, Alan Richson and the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare had mm -hmm. some, he's had some interesting things to say. Let's go ahead and pull some of those up. Uh, Breitbart's covered it. You know, we had that uh, deal about uh, where we talked about Trump. I uh, uh, talked about, um, <laughs> can I, just, I was thinking so uh, hilarious watching these. Well, I mean, he's free to criticize a politician. That is part of the free speech and the beauty of our country is that you and I and anybody else who lives in this country has the right as a citizen to criticize people who work in public office people who are elected, people who govern, we're, we're allowed to do that. So the fact that that is considered some sort of like negative because he's expressing his free speech is kind of odd considering the community that you align yourself with are massive uh, free speech advocates. And that would absolutely go against free speech if the government said you couldn't criticize politicians. That would 100%, that's, that would actually be a total violation of free speech. Actors kind of be part of a project and obviously whether it be Reacher or whether it's um, some of the other like pro, let's know the audience may trend one way on the more social and cultural, okay. political, more social and cultural uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. And then that core audience that was baked in, that was willing to go support your work. You basically told them to go screw themselves. No, you did not. That's not what he did. And I've gone over this before in other videos. He never said that. To them he has talked about his political beliefs as he is allowed to do in this country if you are an advocate for free speech you should be supporting that he never told his audience to go screw themselves that is a straw man that you guys have created there's also no proof that the audience that watches his shows are maga there's no proof of that either because if there was proof you guys would be showing that proof but there is no proof of that and if you don't like my politics don't buy my book now I'm not saying that the that this opening for the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is solely his fault. 
And I would love to know what you guys think about that. But does it have something to do with it that he recently had? I mean, that's 100% speculation. 100%. There's no proof of that. So they were kind of waiting to see how this was going to do. Because if, if this if it would have done really well, um, then they would have come up with another argument. This is just the part of the course for these guys. Had a string of those comments that I just referenced. And now, as documented right here, it debuted nine million. That was it. Nine million dollars was all they made. Uh, that's about what we've made with the Riververse in its entirety. Uh, that comparison makes no sense whatsoever. But it, it, based on a true story, Lion Gates release, uh, which also reportedly cost sixty uh, million dollars uh, to produce, uh, and as Henry Cavill leads uh, a World War II mission on the coast. Right. So it's a Henry Cavill led project. So you're telling me that, that there were more people that disliked Alan, who's a much, not to disrespect him, a much less known actor than Henry Cavill. There was enough people that disliked him that it affected the profitability of a Henry Cavill movie. And if you go back to other things that Henry Cavill has been a part of recently, uh, like Argyle, another underperforming film, it would say to me that that more trends towards the star power of Henry Cavill and less about the stuff that uh, Alan Richardson said. But let's go ahead. To West Africa, yada, yada, yada. Uh, the Richie has been uh, behind numerous box office hits, uh, including the live action Aladdin. It looks like what they're essentially saying that it's not doing that well. However, uh, maybe this is important. Audiences are liking it. Yeah. So that's what they're saying. I so that tells me that there is something else happening, possibly an issue with the economy that would cause the movie to underperform, like so many other movies uh, that people tend to like that are still underperforming in the box office. But I mean, that's not really the spin that you want on this video. So let's see what else you got. I, I can't speak to that, but they're saying that audiences like it. The film mm -hmm. has earned a an A minus uh, through cinema score. Mm -hmm. Now, whether that that's with critics, whether that's with just regular moviegoers, not sure. Well, why don't you look it up? Why don't you research it before you make this video? I mean, if you're going to make that claim and you're going to use it as something in your talking point, at least take like five seconds and, and look that up. Is that too much to ask? But I think that this is probably the most important thing about the future of entertainment. And I'll go to me real quick that I pretty, pretty much every individual is going to have to consider, uh, especially if you are owner of a business or you are, let's say, a lead mm. um, in, in any project. Okay. An owner of a business. That's an interesting thing to say. Let's see where you go with this because I have some thoughts on that. It's not necessarily that they are a reflection of you, like your employees or nothing, but you have to go into it. I mean, and, and it's a must because the people are going to be rightfully, because they've been burned so many times, rightfully, They've been rightfully, they've been burned. So, okay. So for them to have reservations with what they support mm -hmm. is totally understandable. I get it. You get it. So that would mean that all of the issues that people have with the Saska sisters who have been on social media being pro-trans, pro-gay, very progressive uh, women on social media, making movies that your fans have, have argued they don't feel comfortable with. Uh, saying things and doing things that your fans aren't comfortable with. That would mean as a business owner, that's a reflection of you, according to your statements here, and the way you run your business, and that the, the people that are working for you, you should have been more careful about like who you select to work there and things like that. But your argument is that when somebody does something outside of the uh, the work environment, whatever that might be, that that is on them and it's not a reflection of your company. So if that is your stance on this, then you should have no problem with Alan Richson or any other actor off the clock talking about their political and social views. You should have no issue with that because you yourself have championed that. You've said that, unless you're talking out of both sides of your mouth here. Um, but the issue is that you don't believe that other people, especially actors and anybody involved in the entertainment industry, they're ever off the clock. Because their job is to work and make movies and make TV shows. So everything they say off the clock is a reflection of the project they're working on, according to you and so many people in your space. But when they work for you, like the Saska sisters, which, by the way, I don't have an issue with any of their obviously social political beliefs or whatever. I don't have an issue with that. But a lot of your fans did. A lot of your the people that buy your products did. They've expressed that to you. And even if it's only 25%, that's still people that support your project. And there's things that you have done yourself, Eric, that have turned me off as someone that may have wanted to go and buy your project, buy your comics, whatever, because of things you've said. 
Should I hold that against you? Or is that off the clock talk? I'm asking for a friend. And the friend is me. And I think that's where the leaders kind of have to come. You've got to now have a set of sort of ethics that, that there's a set of expectations. So an HR department, you want a humans relation department where they go around and, and monitor and make sure that everything you say and do is managed by a code of ethics. That the people that are working under you, working for a project that you're funding, whether for a project that's under your property or under your business, have to be on the same page. It's like, okay. So you only hire people that are aligned with your social and political beliefs, or they are censored from saying anything that would go against what your project says. So for example, if I worked for you, um, which I never would, but say for example, I did, I would have to sign some sort of contract with you that I would not talk about my political and social beliefs as long as I am working for you. That sounds like censorship, but you know. Okay, this is where we're at. This is our target audience. These are the types of guys that we can't go tell them to screw themselves. It's not going to work out. He never said that. Alan Richardson never said that. Again, that's an over oversimplification of the comments that he made, and it comes from like this caveman mentality that so many people in this space have. Now, often when you are not one, when you don't have much skin in the game, you're just a contractor, which a lot of actors are. And yeah, I work with contractors for sure. But you want to, to the best of your ability, it, it, it's not entirely possible to, uh, you know, be on the same page with everybody that you, that you work with. And some people are going to go rogue, right? It I mean, you had people working on the Yaira trailer that supports Black Lives Matter. You had people working with you on the Yaira trailer, a producer who actually made a movie about a love story in World War II. Like, these are people that work for you. You making this video is just like so unserious clown energy. And the fact that your fans are never going to call you on this is so annoying. It happens. But the, at, at bare minimum, I do think a lot of this starts at the top. And you have to set the tone and everybody else will follow as leadership, is it not? So when I see people go go uh, go off like this, especially like stars, so you got top names uh, that are tied to a project, and then they go on a go on a tangent that really goes and spits in the face. And by the way, Henry Cavill is probably one of the most unproblematic actors. He doesn't talk about anything political or social. So to act like his project failed because of Alan Richson, considering that people have talked about how much they love Henry Cavill's non political stances, um, it's like, what do you do? Do you support the guy? that you believe in or do you not support it because someone said something that you don't believe in in that movie? It's sounds to me like cancel culture, but what do I know? So the people that have largely been the supporters of themselves, it shows me one, they don't have any skin in the game or they're just naive. So if I wanted to play the ignorant card to give them some benefit of the doubt. Oh, you don't have to play that. <laughs> like either, either you're a liar with your business and the way you run your business, you have a double standard, you're a hypocrite, or you're just ignorant to the whole matter. It, like, pick one of those things, but none of those are good. None of those are good things. Which maybe they aren't old. Let's say that that's maybe a possibility that the person is just, uh, Richmond is just, or Rich, he's just so, he's oblivious. That a lot. So you don't like the fact that he has the right to free speech. Got it. Uh, make a note of that. Make a note that that uh, Eric July does not advocate for free speech. So that means all of the Gina Carano content you made, just throw it out the window. Completely throw it out the window because you support Gina Carano's free speech, but you do not support Alan Richens' free speech. Got it. A lot of people were flocking to that. That were flocking to a lot of the uh, films and shows that he was he was rocking with tend to lean or be slanted culturally in a certain way. And so he was just so naive that he thought spitting in their face, he didn't know that they were spitting in his face. I have a hard time believing it, but let's just say that that's maybe a possibility. Hmm. That comes from the top down, and you got to set the tone. Otherwise, you're going to have a bunch of folks that, hey, I got my money. Why do I give a shit about your target audience? So would you argue against Gina Carano then? That's really interesting. So Gina Carano should have been silenced. You would have been okay with Disney and Star Wars telling her to sign some paperwork saying you will not say anything right-leaning because our beliefs, our values, our core, core audience from our analytics skews left. So she can't say anything about her beliefs and, and politics and things like that. I don't think that would be the answer you would give. I think you would give a completely different answer in that regard. So again, it is absolutely hilarious watching these guys navigate and cope with a free speech argument. Alan Richson is expressing his free speech. He's allowed to criticize politicians. He's allowed to criticize the religion that he's a part of. These are all things that he is afforded by the rights of living in the United States of America. 
And this is the same thing these guys argued about when it came to Gina Carano, that she should be allowed to say what she wants to say. And I'm going to keep bringing Gina up because these guys have made video after video after video after video about her. Uh, Eric July is a massive Gina Carano fan. Actually, I think he took a picture with her at uh, one of the conventions he was at, Megacon, I think. So he supports Gina Carano's free speech. But here he's arguing for like a code of ethics HR department, some company telling you to sign something so that when you're working for them, you cannot actually say or do anything that would hurt their brand, which is what people were arguing about when it comes to Gina Carano, that Gina Carano's comments and behavior would hurt the brand of Star Wars. So literally talking out of both sides of his mouth, but the people that watch him, the fans of Eric July, do not care. Because again, I've said this so many times, they want him to say the thing, they want him to do the stuff, they want him to confirm their biases, they want him to repeat and echo all of their beliefs and their values. And this is what he, this is the kind of audience that he cultivates. So in his mind, he can't understand why a Hollywood actor, someone with actual convictions and passion, would speak out about what they believe in at the cost of maybe losing some of their fans. Because these guys have no spine. They're doing all of this for money. Everything they do is about making money. So in Eric's mind, it does not resonate with him that somebody would do something in their life and say something that would be bigger than the money than they're actually making. And nothing he says in this video has any, he has no support for any of his claim. Matter of fact, what he says in this video actually disproves some of his stuff. The fact that fans seem to like the movie, but it's still underperforming would tell me that there's something else going on with the box office that has nothing to do with comments made by Alan Richson, especially since those comments have not gone real mainstream. Basically, it's been just here on social media. Anyway, um, if you want to change things on YouTube and switch up the algorithm, you can join the revolution and become part of that change today. We're already seeing it. YouTube search feature is getting screwed up because we're jumping in and we're destroying this algorithm from the inside. So subscribe, like, comment down below. I can't tell you how many comments I've seen from people that are like, I can't believe this video showed up in my search uh, feature or my recommended or whatever. And, you know, uh, I look for hate content. Your content is not hate content. How dare it be here? So it's working, you guys. We're making a difference. So make sure you subscribe, leave a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.